What does pitchers and catchers report mean to you? What's your favorite? What, should, what does that mean when you hear those words, John? You know, for all those years that I used to look at the guys before me, like Nolan Ryan, 27 spring trainings, whatever it was, some ungodly number, I used to think, how many spring trainings can I go to? And each time we showed up, will I have my fastball? Because you just, you you go through the years we did in the postseason and all the, the lack of rest and all that. And every year I would come to spring training just going, okay, I've done my work. Hmm. Do I have my fastball this year? And lo and behold, every year I would have my fastball. So those are the things a pitcher thinks about from time to time, besides the, the normal, just I want to be healthy. But it's the first two weeks no matter what you've done, where you've done it, it's different when you get there. And for a lot of guys who don't have the luxury of training outdoors, it's a big difference from the indoor workouts to the outdoor workouts. So just showing up, I love how you mentioned Nolan Ryan. Did you ever wind up in a – I mean, who, who were you in a, in a spring training camp with early on that you looked at and like, wow, okay, that's an all-time great, I'm going to learn from him, or just – any story that you have from back in that day? You know, I was always admiring the guys. You know, we had early on when we were trying to be young and trying to figure out how to win. We're losing 100 games every year. There wasn't a lot to look up to when the, when you're going to spring training going, gosh, can we finish anywhere but last? Then guys like Charlie Lee Brent, Terry Pendleton, Sid Bream, veterans that had won somewhere else that you could just pick their brains, that they would have you know, the ability to give you insights. That's what I gravitated towards. I wanted to know what it was like to win. I never thought we were going to win for the longest time. And then getting a taste of that and being able to pass on the baton to the younger guys and just knowing the ins and outs of spring training as a veteran, knowing you didn't have to make the club, you're just working on your craft. And then not to mention, we had the greatest spring training in the history of baseball and the greatest manager. So getting there, knowing your tee times were a certain time. <laughs> Getting to, getting to play, you know, 36, 18 holes, get your work in, get your work out, and uh, go have fun the rest of the day, whether it's at Magic Kingdom or making birdies somewhere on a golf course. So now, did Bobby Cox really match things up with your tee time, John? Did that actually happen? Oh, here's his – here's his, so think about – look, I watch films today, even on our network. I watch – I've seen workouts from players and clubs that I have no idea what that is. None. <laughs> None. Never ran with parachutes, never jumped hurdles, never did any of the things, never picked up a tractor tire, never did any of those things. And we just kept it to the nuts and bolts. Bobby said, get in, do your work, and get out. If you're diligent and you do the things I've asked you to do, go have fun the rest of the day. I'm not going to keep here, keep you here for nonsense. And it was, it was brilliant. And anybody who came from another team, it took them two weeks to get over the fact that they said, seriously? This is all we get to do. We don't we don't have any of these time killer stuff. And I we would tell them, do your work. Most of the work that we got done was where nobody saw it. In the training room, in the weight room, in the cages, then we'd go out and throw for uh, for our limited time and we didn't stay in shag like, you know, to to kill time and then we got in the car, went to a course and uh had the time of our life. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.